In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a typewriter effect in Figma. So let's dive in. For this effect, we need two main elements. We need the text cursor or the caret and the letters. So first, I'm going to start by creating this blinking text cursor, okay? To do that, we just need to create a frame. I'm going to select the frame tool. You can hit F on your keyboard and just draw a frame just like this. I'm going to set its width to 8 and its height to 60 just like this. Don't worry about its dimensions because we can adjust it later on, okay? Here, I'm gonna rename it to carrot and I can change its color as well. I'm gonna use this purple color for this carrot, okay? So I'm gonna copy its hex color code and just paste it right here, perfect. Next, we need to turn it into a component. So while this carrot frame is selected, I'm going to head over to the toolbar and just click on this little icon to create a component. And then we need to create a component set. So basically we need to add a variant to it. I'm going to hit this plus icon now. As you can see, we have this component set with two variants inside. I'm going to select the second one. And if I head over to the field section, I can just click on this eye icon to hide this field. Okay just like this. So basically we have two different states here. Now we need to connect them to create that blinking animation. First, I'm gonna select this default variant, head over to the prototype tab. And from here, I'm just gonna connect it to our second variant, just like this. And I'm gonna set the trigger to after delay and the delay is gonna be 200 milliseconds. The type of animation should be instant. Next, we need to select the second variant and just connect it back to our default variant and set the trigger to after delay. It's gonna be 200 milliseconds and the type of animation should be instant. So let's give it a try and see whether it works or not. I'm gonna hit A on my keyboard, create a simple frame, head over to assets and just drag and drop an instance of this text cursor, just like this. I'm gonna select this frame, hit play to preview it. There we go. Our text cursor looks good, it's animated. Now we need to go ahead and create the text itself. For that, we are gonna need a text layer. So I'm gonna hit T on my keyboard to create a text layer. And here I'm gonna type faster. Let me change the font size. The size doesn't matter that much because you can always scale it up or down depending on your needs. But since I know the font size I used here, which is 64, I'm gonna set it to 64 as well, just like this and I'm gonna set the line height to 72, which is the line height of this text. And the weight is gonna be semi-bold. We can also change the color now. We are gonna use the exact same color as we used for our carrot, just like this. And now we need to combine this text layer with this carrot component, okay? To do that, I'm gonna drag and drop an instance of this carrot component here, just like this. Select them both and just align them vertically. You can make your carrot taller if you want, just like this. I'm gonna set its height to 72 and let's align them again, perfect. And then I'm gonna put them inside the frame. You can use auto layout for that, but it's not needed in this case. So instead, I'm gonna select them both, right click here and just click on frame selection to place them inside a frame. As you can see, now we have this frame 15 and I'm gonna rename it to letter. All right, so far so good. What do we need to do now? Well, we need to somehow mask all these letters, okay? Because we wanna unmask them letter by letter. So we need to find a way to mask these letters. To do that, we can just select this letter frame and just check this clip content checkbox, just like this. And then if I try to resize this frame, look what happens. You see, I can simply mask these letters. But what about our carrot? Well, we need to select our carrot here inside and we need to set its constraints to top and right because we want to keep it on the right side of this frame, okay? And now if I select this letter frame and I try to resize it, there we go. We can simply mask all these letters and then unmask them one by one. Okay, so now I'm gonna mask all these letters except the first letter. Next, we need to turn this letter frame into a component. So while it's selected, turn it into a component and let's add a variant to create a component set. All right, now what we need to do is unmask letters one by one. So here we have our second variant. I'm gonna simply unmask the second letter. 
Let's just enlarge this component set. I'm gonna unmask it. Then while it's selected, duplicate it, unmask the third letter, and we need to continue doing that. All right, now it's time to change the word, okay? So we need to mask these letters again and then change the word entirely. To do that, I'm gonna duplicate this and try to mask it again. Of course, you can duplicate these elements and just reposition them, but I think this way is much faster. So I'm gonna do it quickly like this and we are almost done. Now I'm gonna duplicate it once again, unmask the first letter and here is where we need to change the text itself. So I'm gonna select the text and I'm gonna change it to easier and once again select the variant itself and make sure that the first letter is unmasked. I'm gonna duplicate it, unmask the second letter and just continue doing that. All right, we have all the variants we need. Now it's time to connect them and animate them. So the way we need to connect them is like this. I'm gonna select the first variant. Make sure to select the variant itself, not the elements inside. I'm gonna select this default variant. Head over to prototype and just connect it to your second variant. The trigger should be after delay. The duration should be 200 milliseconds and animation should be instant. So basically we need to go ahead and connect all these variants one by one. Of course you can do that if you prefer this way, but I think we can use another way which is much faster. So I'm gonna select this default variant, head over to the prototype and here under interactions, I'm just gonna hover over this area, left click to select this particular interaction, hit Control C or Command C to copy this interaction, okay? Then I'm gonna select all these variants except the last one because the last one should not be connected to any other variant. I'm gonna select all these variants and hit Control V or Command V to paste that interaction that we just copied, just like this. So now all our variants have an interaction but they are all connected to the second variant, okay? So now what we need to do is this. We need to select these variants one by one, for example, this third one, Head over to interaction and just open up this drop down menu and just change the destination. So instead of variant two, this one should be connected to variant three. This one should be connected to variant four and so on. So I'm gonna fast forward this process. All right, it's done. Now it's time to give it a try and see whether it works or not. So I'm gonna head over to the assets tab and from here, I'm gonna drag and drop this letter component inside my hero section, just like this. Let me align it with my text layer here. Okay, I think it looks good. Now I'm gonna select this hero section and hit play to see whether it works or not. All right, it works perfectly, but I'm gonna change something to make it even better. If I just refresh the page, as you can see, once the first word is finished, it's erased immediately. So the user doesn't have time to read it properly. So I'm gonna change the delay once we reach to this point, okay? Once the first word is finished. So here, I'm gonna change the delay from 200 milliseconds to 1500. And let me refresh the page once again. There we go, it looks awesome. All right guys, thanks for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this. Have an awesome day and see you soon.